Hello ladies and gents, I am back yet again. I took a short hiatus because I needed to order a new microphone. Long story short, my other one was just causing way too many problems, feedback and all sorts of other garbage. It was picking up on my AC, and overall the quality of the audio clips I was getting was just not up to par with what I wanted. So I got a new mic, it's actually pretty cheap, and uh, sounds great. So, this is the first video with it. So welcome to the latest and greatest installment in the Creepypasta Chronicles. The series where in each episode, we take a dive into the history and lore behind various well-known, or maybe not so well-known, creepypasta. The subject of today is certainly well-known. We will be taking a look at the one and only Jeff the Killer, one of the first creepypastas I think to ever come out on the internet. The original edited images and creepypasta tales that kick this pasta off have been spread far and wide about the internet over almost two decades now. I'm sure most of the more seasoned readers here have probably heard of Jeff. Before we get started, I just wanted to make it clear that this creepypasta and character are under the ownership of somebody named Cesar on the internet. He's a deviant art account. He's the individual who wrote the very first Jeff the Killer creepypasta many years ago. I will be linking his deviant art in the description, so be sure to check it out and support. Alright, let's kick this thing off with some history as per usual. Sit back, relax, and enjoy my brand new audio quality. <laughs> Unless you're a new viewer. In that case, welcome. Let's do this thing. The concept of Jeff the Killer has origins similar to Slender Man and Smile Dog, starting out as a simple edited image on a random website ages ago. If we want to get technical, it was actually two edited images, but one of them is far less popular and not really shown these days. Both images showed up on a Japanese website called pya.cc PYA in November of 2005. This is simply the earliest confirmed sighting, however. They may have been circulating around for longer. Believe it or not, there was once a lot of controversy surrounding these two photos and their supposed origins. It took a while for them to be traced back to the year 2005. Later on, in August of 2007, a video was uploaded to YouTube titled NNN and then a bunch of kanji I don't understand because I don't speak Japanese, unfortunately. The video featured the more popular of the two very similar images. It's worth noting that these two images were nearly identical, essentially being two variations of one another. One of the variations is distinctly more disturbing than the other, which is what made it more popular. I will display them for your viewing pleasure as I narrate. I might have already shown them by now. That's the magic of editing. Anyway... The following year of 2008 was a big one for Jeff the Killer. First off, a user on the popular Newgrounds forums named Killer Jeff posted the more popular image, claiming it was actually a real-life picture of him. He carried on to impersonate Jeff on the thread for quite a while. This brought a lot of attention to the picture and associated the name Jeff with it. Next, several months later, a YouTube user by the name of Cesar, as mentioned before, so I suppose he has both a DeviantArt and a YouTube channel. Probably more, too. Uploaded a video presentation of the very first proper creepypasta for Jeff the Killer. Thus, the notorious image now had a story behind it. This story from 2008 is not the most well-known one, however. The one most of you, or anyone for that matter that is into creepypasta, has probably read was written in 2011 by GamerFuel TV. This was the story that set the now-established backstory for Jeff. From then on, the mythos of Jeff only grew, with thousands of derivative stories popping up all over Creepypasta Wiki and Creepypasta.com. By 2015, too many stories and videos dedicated to Jeff the Killer existed to even be counted in one sitting. I could go over dozens of them here, but the video wouldn't be ending any time this century. <laughs> Long story short of it, in 2015, the 2011 Jeff the Killer story that everyone had established as the official one was removed from the Creepypasta wiki for lacking the quality standards the wiki expected. Kind of a shocker considering its popularity. The decision was highly criticized at the time, as you might guess. The anger didn't last long though, as the story was subsequently replaced with a revamped version. This revamp was chosen via a contest the wiki held. This retelling of the 2011 tale was written by site admin K. Banning Kellum and is almost two hours long. The uncut version can be read on the Spin Pasta Wiki. Something to note here is this story does change the origins of Jeff a little bit. 
I was originally going to read it in this video, but even the cut version, as posted on the Creepypasta wiki, is nearly an hour long, about 55 minutes, which is just too long for this video. So we will be sticking with the original story, even though it's not the highest quality, it has the nostalgia factor. The following information was mostly established in the 2011 Creepypasta. Jeff the Killer, born Jeffrey Woods, is the titular protagonist turned villain of the 2011 and 2015 revamp stories of the same name. He is an adolescent serial killer said to have been driven to insanity after severe disfigurement at the hands of a gang of bullies. The bullies supposedly lit Jeff on fire. Jeff has extremely pale skin and burnt off eyelids, giving him a ghoulish appearance. He also has a disturbing Glasgow smile stretched across his face, apparently self-inflicted. Overall, he is said to be a thin teenage boy with a disfigured face. Clothing-wise, he is normally shown wearing a pair of black dress pants and a white hoodie. Before being severely burned, Jeff was a quiet and somewhat antisocial kid. His disfigurement, however, turned him into a violent, torturous soul, hell-bent on inflicting pain and death onto others. Jeff's weapon of choice appears to be one or two ordinary kitchen knives. At one point in time, a rumor was spread around the web that the original more popular image of Jeff was actually a photoshopped image of a girl named Katie Robinson. Robinson was said to have tragically ended her own life after excessive cyberbullying due to her weight in the fall of 2008. The rumor even had a photo of a girl said to be Robinson being passed around the web. The photo's first appearance was on a Christian parody site called TrueChristian.com. The, the details behind this whole rumor are quite lengthy, but the short of it is, the rumor was debunked as a hoax. Around 2015, a YouTuber by the username Scare Theater, who some of you may know, had an interview with the one and only Cesar himself. Cesar called out the entire situation with Robinson and said it was bogus then and there. He wasn't wrong. In fact, the aforementioned picture of Robinson was actually of someone entirely different named Heather White. White, being alive and well, spoke out about the whole ordeal in a discussion with creepypasta debunker Gage, another YouTuber. I believe this was the first time when it became more known that the original Jeff the Killer image and its sister image have been around since early 2005. The face behind all the editing, however, to this day, is still unknown. Before reading the 2011 pasta, I wanted to share a couple of quick facts displayed on the creepypasta file page of Jeff. The original creator of Jeff as a creepypasta is officially said to be Cesar. He also has rights to the character. The 2011 story, which I will narrate shortly, was written on the Creepypasta wiki by user GameFuelTV. Jeff has been criticized as being the worst Creepypasta of all time, despite his huge following and status as a Creepypasta progenitor. All content released expanding on Jeff's story is considered non-canon unless permission to expand is granted by Cesar. Finally, not a fact from the wiki but something I wanted to preface. The 2015 revamp story by Kellum is very long, as I said before, and changes Jeff's origin story quite a bit. I did intend on reading this version of the story, but it would have been a 55 minute long session in an already long video. Also, as I said, some of the lore in the story contradicts what has been established earlier, as the revamp does some retconning. This includes changes to the accident Jeff went through and his appearance post-accident. I am considering dedicating an entire video to the 2015 story. Alright, so the 2011 story begins with an excerpt from a local newspaper titled, Ominous Unknown Killer is Still at Large. After weeks of unexplained murders, the ominous unknown killer is still on the rise. After little evidence has been found, a young boy states he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells his story. 
I had a bad dream and I woke up in the middle of the night, says the boy. I saw that for some reason the window was open, even though I remember it being closed before I went to bed. I got up and shut it once more. Afterwards, I simply crawled under my covers and tried to get back to sleep. That's when I had a strange feeling, like someone was watching me. I looked up and nearly jumped out of my bed. There, in the little ray of light illuminating from between my curtains, were a pair of two eyes. These weren't regular eyes, they were dark, ominous eyes. They were boarded in black and just plain out terrified me. That's when I saw his mouth, a long horrendous smile that made every hair on my body stand up. The figure stood there, watching me. Finally, after what seemed like forever, he said it. A simple phrase, but in a way only a madman could speak. He said, Go to sleep. I let out a scream. That's what sent him at me. He pulled up a knife aiming at my heart. He jumped on top of my bed. I fought him back. I kicked. I punched. I rolled around, trying to knock him off me. That's when my dad busted in. The man threw the knife, and it went to my dad's shoulder. The man probably would have finished him off if one of the neighbors hadn't alerted the police. They drove into the parking lot and ran towards the door. The man turned and ran down the hallway. I heard a smash, like glass breaking. As I came out of my room, I saw the window that was pointing towards the back of my house was broken. I looked out of it to see him vanish into the distance. I can tell you one thing. I will never forget that face. Those cold, evil eyes and that psychotic smile. They will never leave my head. End quote. Police are still on the lookout for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description of this story, please contact your local police department. That's the end of the excerpt. Now into the proper story. Jeff and his family had just moved into a new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his brother Lou couldn't complain, though. A new, better house. What was not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Hello, she said. I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. I just wanted to introduce myself, and to introduce my son. She turns around and calls her son over. Billy, these are our new neighbors. Billy said hi and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret and this is my husband Peter and my two sons, Jeff and Lou. They each introduced themselves and then Barbara invited them to her son's birthday. Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said that they would love to. When Jeff and his family are done packing, Jeff went up to his mom. Mom, why would you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Jeff, said his mother, we just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. Now, we are going to that party, and that's final. Jeff started to talk, but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mom said something, it was final. He walked up to his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there looking at his ceiling when suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as just some random feeling. He heard his mother call him down to get his stuff, and he walked down to get it. The next day, Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and got ready for school. As he sat there, eating breakfast, he once again got that feeling. This time, it was stronger. It gave him a slight tugging pain, but he once again dismissed it. As he and Lou finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus, and then, all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked his skateboard up and caught it with his hands. The kid seems to be about 12, one year younger than Jeff. He was wearing an Aereo Pastel shirt and ripped blue jeans. Well, 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 it looks like we've got some new meat. Suddenly, two other kids appeared. One was super skinny and the other was huge. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there is Keith. Jeff and Lou looked over to the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. And he's Troy. 
They looked over at the fat kid. Talk about a tub of lard. This kid looked like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. And I, said the first kid, am Randy. Now, for all the kids in this neighborhood, there is a small price to, for bus fare, if you catch my drift. Lou stood up, ready to punch the lights out of the kid's eyes when one of his friends pulled a knife on him. I had hoped you would be more cooperative, but it seems we must do this the hard way. The kid walked up to Lou and took his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now it was truly strong, a burning sensation. He stood up, but Lou gestured him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give back my bro's wallet, or else. Randy put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own knife. Oh? And what will you do? Just as he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Randy screamed, and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff, but Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith lashed out at him, but Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground, screaming. Troy rushed him too. But Jeff didn't even need the knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach and Troy went down. As he fell, he puked all over. Lou could do nothing but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how'd you... was all he said. They saw the bus coming and they knew they'd be blamed for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Lou made it to school, they didn't dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen. Lou just thought of that as his brother beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was. The urge to just hurt someone. He didn't like how it sounded, but he couldn't help feeling happy. He felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the entire day of school. Even as he walked home due to the whole thing near the bus stop and knowing how he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore, he felt happy. When he got home, his parents asked him how his day was and he said in a somewhat ominous voice, it was a wonderful day. Next morning, he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at the door his mother looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, these officers tell me that you attacked three kids, that it wasn't even regular fighting, and that they were stabbed. Stabbed, Jeff. Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother that it was true. Mom, they were the ones who pulled the knives on me and Lou. Son, said one of the cops, we found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on his stomach and we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now, what does that tell us? Jeff knew it was no use. He could say him and Lou had been attacked, but then there was no proof it was not them who attacked first. They couldn't say that they weren't fleeing, because truth be told, they were. So Jeff couldn't defend himself or Lou. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it since it was he who beat up all the kids. Sir, it, it was me. I was the one who beat up the kids. Lou tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his partner and they both nod. Well, kid, looks like a year in juvie. Wait, says Lou. They all looked up to see him holding a knife. The officers pulled their guns and locked them on Lou. It was me. I beat up those little punks. Have the marks to prove it. He lifted up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises as if he was in a struggle. Son, just put the knife down, said the officer. Lou held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Lou, it was me. I did it. Jeff had tears running down his face. Huh, <laughs> poor bro, trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Lou out to the patrol car. Lou, tell them it was me. Tell them. I was the one who beat up those kids. Jeff's mother put her hands on his shoulders. Jeff, please. You don't have to lie. We know it's Lou. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the cop car sped off with Lou inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulled into the driveway, 
seeing Jeff's face and knowing something was wrong. Son? Son, what is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walked his father inside to break the bad news to him as Jeff wept in the driveway. After an hour or so, Jeff walked back into the house, seeing that his parents were both shocked, sad, and disappointed. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Lou when it was his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by, with no word from Lou at JDC. No friends to hang out with. Nothing but sadness and guilt. That was until Saturday, when Jeff is woken up by his mother, with a happy, sunshiny face. Jeff, it's the day, she said as she opened up the curtains and let light flood into his room. What? What's today? asked Jeff as he stirred awake. It's Billy's party! He was now fully awake. Mom, you're joking, right? You can't expect me to go to some kid's party after... There was a long pause. Jeff, we both know what happened. I think this party could be the thing that brightens up past days. Now get dressed. Jeff's mother walked out of the room and downstairs to get ready herself. He fought himself to get up. He picked out a random shirt and a pair of jeans and walked downstairs. He saw his mother and father all dressed up, his mother in a dress and his father in a suit. He thought, why would they ever wear such fancy clothes to a kid's party? Jeff, is that all you're going to wear? said Jeff's mom. Better than wearing too much, he said. His mother pushed down the feeling to yell at him and hit it with a smile. Now Jeff, we may be overdressed, but this is how you go if you want to make an impression, said his father. Jeff grunted and went back up to his room. I don't have any fancy clothes, he yelled downstairs. Just pick out something, called his mother. He looked around in his closet for what he would call fancy. He found a pair of black dress pants he had for special occasions and an undershirt. He couldn't find a shirt to go with it though. He looked around and found only striped and patterned shirts, none of which would go with the dress pants. Finally, he found a white hoodie and put it on. You're wearing that? They both said. His mother looked at her watch. Oh, no time to change. Let's just go. She said as she herded Jeff and his father out the door. They crossed the street over to Barbara and Billy's house. They knocked on the door and it appeared that Barbara, just like his parents, was way overdressed. As they walked inside, all Jeff could see were adults, no kids. The kids are out in the yard. Jeff, how about you go and meet some of them, said Barbara. Jeff walked outside to a yard full of kids. They were running around in weird cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. He might as well have been standing in a Toys R Us. Suddenly, a kid came up to him and handed him a toy gun and hat. Hey, wanna play? He said. Ah, no kid, I'm way too old for this stuff. The kid looked up at him with that weird puppy dog face. Please, said the kid. Fine, said Jeff. He put on the hat and started to pretend to shoot at the kids. At first, he thought it was totally ridiculous, but then he actually started to have fun. It might not have been super cool, but it was the first time he had done something that took his mind off of his brother. So he played with the kids for a while, until he heard noise. A weird rolling noise. Then it hit him. Randy, Troy, and Keith all jumped over the fence on their skateboards. Jeff dropped the fake gun and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with a burning hatred. Hello, Jeff, is it? He said. We have some unfinished business. Jeff saw his bruised nose. I think we're even. I beat the crap out of you, and you got my brother sent to JDC. Randy got an angry look in his eyes. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. You may have kicked our asses that one day, but not today. As he said that, Randy rushed at Jeff. They both fell to the ground. Randy punched Jeff in the nose, and Jeff grabbed him by the ears and headbutted him. Jeff pushed Randy off of him, and both rose to their feet. Kids were screaming and parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pulled guns out of their pockets. No one interrupts or guts will fly, they said. Randy pulled a knife on Jeff and stabbed it into his shoulder. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Randy started kicking him in the face. After three kicks, Jeff grabs his foot and twists it, causing Randy to fall on the ground. 
Jeff stood up and walked towards the back door. Troy grabbed him. Need some help? He picks Jeff up by the back of the collar and throws him through the patio door. As Jeff tries to stand, he is kicked down to the ground. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he starts to cough up blood. Come on, Jeff, fight me! He picks Jeff up and throws him into the kitchen. Randy sees a bottle of vodka on the counter and smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Fight! He throws Jeff back into the living room. Come on, Jeff, look at me! Jeff glances up, his face riddled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to JDC, and now you're just going to sit here and let him rot in there for a whole year. You should be ashamed. Jeff starts to get up. Oh, finally. You stand and fight. Jeff is now to his feet, blood and vodka on his face. Once again, he gets that strange feeling, the one he hasn't felt for a while. Finally, he's up, says Randy as he runs at Jeff. That's when it happens. Something inside Jeff snaps. His psyche is destroyed. All rational thinking is gone. All he can do is think of killing. He grabs Randy and pile drives him to the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the chest. The punch causes Randy's heart to stop. As Randy gasps for breath, Jeff hammers down on him, punch after punch, blood gushing from Randy's body until he takes one final breath and dies. Everyone is looking at Jeff now. The parents, the crying kids, even Troy and Keith, although they easily break from their gaze and point their guns at Jeff. Jeff sees the guns trained on him and runs for the stairs. As he runs, Troy and Keith let out fire on him, each shot missing. Jeff runs up the stairs. He hears Troy and Keith following up behind. As they let out their final rounds of bullets, Jeff ducks into the bathroom. He grabs the towel rack and rips it off the wall. Troy and Keith race in, knives ready. Troy swings his knife at Jeff, who backs away and bangs the towel rack into Troy's face. Troy goes down hard, and now all that's left is Keith. He is more agile than Troy, though, and ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack. He dropped the knife and grabbed Jeff by the neck. He pushed him into the wall. A thing of bleach falls down on top of him from the top shelf. It burnt both of them, and they both started to scream. Jeff wiped his eyes as best as he could. He pulled back the towel rack and swung it straight into Keith's head. As he lay there, bleeding to death, he let out an ominous smile. What's so funny? asked Jeff. Keith pulled out a lighter and switched it on. What's funny, he said, is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol. Jeff's eyes widened as Keith threw the lighter at him. As soon as the flame made contact with him, the flames ignited the alcohol and the vodka. While the alcohol burned him, the bleach corroded his skin. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught fire. He tried to roll out the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol had made him into a walking inferno. He ran down the hall and fell down the stairs. Everybody started screaming as they saw Jeff, now a man on fire, dropped to the ground, nearly dead. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother and the other parents trying to extinguish the flames. That's when he passed out. When Jeff woke up, he had a cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see anything, but he felt a cast on his shoulder and stitches all over his body. He tried to stand up, but he realized that there was some tube in his arm, and when he tried to get up, it fell out, and a nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet, she said as she put him back in his bed and reinserted the tube. Jeff sat there, with no vision, no idea what his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. Honey, are you okay? She asked. Jeff couldn't answer though. His face was covered and he was unable to speak. Oh honey, I have great news. After all the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed of trying to attack you, they decided to let Lou go. This made Jeff almost bolt up, stopping halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow, and then you two will be able to be together again. Jeff's mother hugs Jeff and says her goodbyes. The next couple of weeks were those where Jeff was visited by his family. Then came the day where his bandages were to be removed. His family members were all there to see it, what he would look like. As the doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face, everyone was on the edge of their seats. They waited until the last bandage holding the cover over his face was almost removed. Let's hope for the best, said the doctor. 
He quickly pulls the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. Jeff's mother screams at the sight of his face. Lou and Jeff's dad stare awestruck at his face. What? What? What happened to my face? Jeff said. He rushed out of the bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the cause of the distress. His face. It... It was horrible. His lips were burnt to a deep shade of red. His face was turned into a pure white color, and his hair singed from brown to black. He slowly put his hand to his face. It had a sort of leathery feel to it now. He looked back at his family, then back at the mirror. Jeff, said Lou. It's not that bad. Not that bad, said Jeff. It's perfect. His family was equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. His parents noticed that his left eye and hand were twitching. Uh, Jeff, are you okay? Okay? I've never felt more happy. Look at me. This face goes perfectly with me. He couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it, looking at the mirror. What caused this? Well, you might recall that when Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his mind had his sanity snapped. Now he was left as a crazy killing machine. That is, his parents didn't know. Doctor, said Jeff's mom, is my son all right? You know, in the head? Oh yes, this behavior is typical for patients that have taken very large amounts of painkillers. If his behavior doesn't change in a few weeks, bring him back here and we'll give him a psychological test. Oh, thank you, doctor. Jeff's mother went over to Jeff. Jeff, sweetie, it's time to go. Jeff looks away from the mirror, his face still formed into a crazy smile. Okay, mommy. His mother took him by the shoulder and took him to get his clothes. This is what came in, said the lady at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down to see the black dress pants and white hoodie her son wore. Now they were clean of blood and stitched together. Jeff's mom led him to his room and made him put his clothes on. Then they left, not knowing that this was their final day of life. Later that night, Jeff's mother woke to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she looked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile into his cheeks. Jeff, what are you doing? asked his mother. Jeff looked over to his mother. I couldn't keep smiling, Mommy. It hurt after a while. Now, I can smile forever. Jeff's mother noticed his eyes, ringed in black. Jeff, your eyes! His eyes were seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got tired and my eyes started to close. So I burned out the eyelids so I could forever see myself. My new face. Jeff's mother slowly started to back away, seeing that her son was going insane. What's wrong, Mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Y yes, son, she said. Yes, you are. L let me go get daddy so he could see your face. She ran into the room and shook Jeff's dad from his sleep. Honey, get the gun. We... She stopped as she saw Jeff in the doorway, holding a knife. Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they hear as Jeff rushes them with the knife, gutting both of them. His brother Lou woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he just shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. As he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. He looked up before Jeff's hand covered his mouth. He slowly raised the knife, ready to plunge it into Lou. Lou thrashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh, Jeff said. Just go to sleep. And that's the end. So as you can tell, this original story was a bit crazy. The, the grammar was odd it kind of like the tenses went all over the place it went from past tense to present tense it kind of swung all about that one scene in the birthday party was like straight out of a john wick movie they were just like beating the crap out of each other you had like what, what like a 12 year old kid with a knife and a gun a little crazy but you know this is the original 2011 story so take it with a grain of salt it set the legacy up you can't hate on it too much but yeah that is the original jeff the killer story as it was before it was taken off the creepypasta wiki
All right, we're going to wrap this video off with our rating. In terms of horror, I thought I was being harsh on Smile Dog, so prepare yourselves. Jeff the Killer, to me, is really not much of a horror character. I see him more akin to someone like the Joker from DC's Batman comics. Jeff certainly makes a good villain, but I'm not scared by the concept of him. He is a young kid with killer instincts who is driven mad by pain and mental anguish. The scariest part of this whole pasta is honestly the two edited images from 2005. So, in my opinion, Jeff is getting two spooky scary skeletons out of five. I hope you like my new rating system as well, for you returning viewers. In terms of realism, other than the seemingly supernatural strength Jeff is portrayed to have in the original story specifically, I wouldn't say this story is unrealistic. In fact, I think Jeff is the most realistic character we have covered so far. I could totally see a disfigured, mentally disturbed teen going on a serial killing spree. As such, I will give a celebratory 4.5 skeletons out of 5. In terms of mystery, there's really not that much to see here, folks. Other than, again, the supernatural abilities Jeff is often said to have. I'll give it a 2 out of 5. But you know what, actually? Because of the whole debacle between the Origins and the whole Heather White situation, I will relent and give it a 3 out of 5, since that whole thing was kind of a big mystery. Even though it was technically outside of the story itself. And for our depth rating, I believe we finally have a creepypasta truly worthy of a perfect depth rating. Jeff the Killer is far more iconic than I even realized before making this video. He is an absolutely gargantuan presence on the internet across various creepypasta sharing platforms. There are countless stories, videos, and even a full-blown hoax behind this character. I couldn't even try to show all the videos and artwork dedicated to Jeff in one video. And best of all, I, to my knowledge, have not found many crappy games or movies surrounding the pasta. I have heard that there are some games, but I feel like having fan games is just kind of part of the territory, so I'm going to let it slide. There's no big blockbuster movie flops or anything like that, which is, which is good in my book. Jeff the Killer is probably the most popular creepypasta of all time, everyone. I thought it was Slenderman, but looking at Jeff now and, and just seeing how many derivative stories there are, it, I can't ignore it. Five skeletons out of five. Now, actually, you know what? Six skeletons out of five. Jeff gets extra credit. A great job to Cesar for creating this legendary creepypasta. And to whoever created that picture all those years ago in 2005. So, with the extra credit in place, Jeff the Killer gets a 15.5 Spooky Scary Skeletons out of 20, or 77.5%. This is a solid C+, maybe even a B- with a curve. Depends on who your professor is, I guess. <laughs> yes, the 2011 story and character of Jeff get dicked on a lot. Yes, the story's not perfect, as you, you know, we just read it. But come on. Jeff is iconic, and I believe he as a character deserves this rating. Just a note before we wrap up, taking the revamped 2015 story into account may have changed this overall rating for the better in some ways, but I left that out of consideration for the time being. I may cover that in a later video. Alright, phew. That covers our most expansive dive into a creepypasta yet. And just think, I've left a ton of stuff out. There is so much more to be said about this pasta. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this look into Jeff the Killer. Be sure to check out the link to Cesar's DeviantArt in the description. It is his character after all, and I do not want to step on anybody's toes. This was his brainchild many moons ago. Also, be sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying my content. Check out my channel for other narration content as well. I've got a good 20 videos out at this point. Alright everyone, stay tuned and stay cool.